black and gold. You put too many chocolate chips in here. Hello, people. Buy my ribbon. So weird they have ribbon in two different spots at Hobby Lobby. I was on live on TikTok. And I was going to go back live, but I don't know. They don't engage as much as you guys do over here. I keep trying to build that audience to reach people who may not have, like maybe they're not on Facebook or YouTube. So I keep trying to reach that audience, but I like engagement and they don't engage with me enough over on the TG. So I'm coming back over here because I want to talk about numbers real quick. Because also, when I was on that live, I originally went to Joanne's to find my ribbon and end up having to come to Hobby Lobby. Very big difference in price. <laughs> Very big difference in price. But and being in Hobby Lobby, um, I took a picture of it, so if you haven't seen it, I posted it on my Facebook page. And it was looking at like the different price points and like the way it's also crazy how they did the schools of ribbon. Ooh. So I said, let's come on and let's talk about numbers from a couple different perspectives. Hello, hello. Incredible afternoon. Give the video a thumbs up. Oh, hold on. It's going to go black for just a second. I need to, I should do it while I was at the light. I got to pull over. I need to make my other page to where, well, where it's public. Oh, good. I'm at a red light again. Don't try and take it. Don't try and take it. You're not going to make it. No sense you get no ticket. Okay, hold on one second, y'all. Okay, there we go. I had to change the privacy on my Shaquille LaBelle. Um, anywho, so let's get into it, right? Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. I am Shaquille, the professor. Uh, our company is HS Inc. 365. We are a full-service company that not only sells you the submation ink, submation paper, pigment ink, and other accessories that you would need uh, for certain print methods, we also teach you how to design for those, how to create um, a wide variety of creative, oops, me, handmade uh, professional items, as well as teaching about the business side of it and helping you to um, think about it from a true business standpoint, how to market, how to price, um, and how to just grow and scale your business on the operational side. Um, and then there's so much more as far as like, you know, um, the, the true business side and tax side and business credit. Like there's so many facets of business, but I try to help you guys on the operational side and from my um, experience and my knowledge of these different things. So I have an order that I have to do and I have to make some cheer bows for the bottom of the there. I'm making signature sashes for um, a school for their senior cheerleaders, and I have to make some cheer bows for the bottom of the sashes. Um, I was going to go to a place here in South Florida, that's where I normally go at, 
one thing that I love about where I live at is there's a lot of like, I guess you can say wholesale type places here in South Florida where you can get stuff at really, really great prices. Um, and I don't have to order a lot of stuff online. Well, um, one of the places where I get the ribbon, I was like, I really did not want to ride all the way downtown. And it's so crazy because I don't remember the, the, the business by name. I completely forgot the name of the business for me to even look it up. Now I could have gone through like the maps. I know like what street is on and it would show me like the names, but I completely forgot the name of it. Um, and I didn't want to ride all the way downtown and then they potentially not be open because my husband said that a lot of the fabric stores that were downtown end up closing due to the pandemic and people not kind of going there and them not being able to sustain. Because my brother-in-law does a lot of sewing and a lot of the places that he went to shut down, so they had to find some new places. Um, I haven't had to purchase ribbon um, in a while because it's been a minute since I've done like churros um, at that magnitude of, you know, because anytime I just get like a little small spool of ribbon. But I um, needed ribbon. And so since I did not want to go downtown, I said, well, I'm also in Miami. There is a hub here for Amazon. When I go on there, the fact that I was able to get it overnight meant that they had the ribbon at the Amazon hub that's like two feet away from my house or if, actually even the office, actually closer to the office than it is to my house. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just order it off of Amazon. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to waste any gas. We have Prime. I'm going to get it overnight. It's going to be amazing, right? So, fault of my own, I did wait too long to order it because I was also trying to order something else. I wanted to just do the transaction all at once, and I ended up waiting too long to order it. So, by the time I did order it and it got here, I was pissed because I'm out of time. I don't want to have to deal with trying to get another one or like. You know, maybe getting one that wasn't local, maybe like the, the, like the actual ribbon company was going to send it to me. So got the ribbon from Amazon and it was dirty. I'm going to post that picture. Um, I forgot to do it when I got it. But when I tell you it was filthy, I, I couldn't tell if it was just dirt, if it was mold. It felt kind of wet. So I think it was kind of moldy. Um, so or like mildewish, but it was horrid. That lets me know that that was probably a product that is just sitting in Amazon's warehouse. So then it had me thinking certain things I'm just not ordering from Amazon because people use Amazon as a marketplace and it's a great way to kind of get your business going. And, you know, uh, well, People advertise a lot now. Okay, well, just buy things in bulk from China, put it on Amazon, send it to them, let them ship it out and stuff like that or whatever. But if it's something that's not in demand and people aren't really going there for stuff like ribbon, it can sit on their shelves. And I think that's what happened with this ribbon. It just sat on their shelves and it was a hot mess.com when it came to us. So then yesterday was a holiday. Um, I got over the weekend or... Yeah, I got it. I'm not sure it was like got it Friday or Saturday morning, somewhere in there. I forget which day it was. But then it was a holiday. I had some other stuff I had to do um, for like the rest of their order and all those different things. So I Saturday I just could not go to the store. Sunday, um, what did I do on Sunday? I forget what I was doing on Sunday. Monday, um, it was a it's a it was a four hour print job for the posters. Um, and I had to finalize some other stuff. So I did work on yesterday, but I didn't have time to like run to the store. I said, well, today, um, once I kind of go, get even set up with cutting out the poster boards and setting those up, I'll go and get the ribbon. I go to Joanne's first. And at Joanne's, I realized when I was on TikTok, I had a whole slow moment because nine feet and three yards are technically the same thing. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even know what math I used. So I was like, okay, I can only do two. And I did the math. I'm like, wait a minute. No, three yards. I can do three ribbons out of this. But I'm glad I had that lapse in mathematical judgment to where the math wasn't mathing. 
because it forced me to go to Hobby Lobby. At Joanne's, the ribbon, a three inch gross grain ribbon, nine feet, i.e. three yards, was $9.49. $9.49. And I was like, Lord, what I'm not trying to do is spend this kind of money on some daggone ribbon when it literally costs way less than that for a 25, um, they don't want to say it was 25 yards. Not 25 feet. It was 25 yards, I want to say. It was it 25 feet? I forget which one it was. But it was definitely a big cost difference in paying $9.49 plus tax for a spool of ribbon. I was like, OM to the flipping G. So I was like, okay, I'm getting out of here. Um, and I'm going to Hobby Lobby. So I get in there and once I looked at their ribbon, that is what prompted this conversation about knowing numbers. Let's discuss numbers. So I posted the picture and I, in my hand, I had a white ribbon, which is what I have here, right? The size of this spool is much smaller. And then I think I had like a red and a yellow or something like that. I just grabbed two of the bigger ones that they had. I really wish they had orange because orange would have made my life so much easier. One is close to the color that they, well, it's the actual color that they need and it would have been cheaper, but I had to get white or black at this point because I couldn't use the other colors. So the reds, orange, blues, yellow, all those other colors were humongous, right? They were these really big spools. They were three, they were still three, still three inches, still three yards. The colored ones on a bigger spool was $3.99. These on a smaller spool, same amount of money is $5.99. Right? So $2 more for the exact same amount of ribbon. Technically, them putting it on a bigger spool, which means like, let's say like this was cut from a sheet of something. You can get more of these from that sheet and more cores from whatever core that they're making compared to making it a bigger one. So it's technically more supplies for the other ones because they had a bigger core. This piece is bigger, all that, right? So you would think, okay, this is, you're putting more into this. Why make those colors a bigger spool, and yet they cost less? These are a smaller spool, and they cost more. But the amount of it is still the same. So I posed that question on my page as to, can someone explain why? And it was to challenge you guys to think of it from a business aspect, right? Let's break down why they're set up that way. One, if this is a color, red, I mean, white and black is a color that is a more popular color. It's a color that's in demand. People want more of those. They probably buy more of those because they're your neutral tones. A smaller spool means that in that space that they have allotted for that for this particular size, they can fit more of them and keep more on the shelves at any given time because this is a smaller, it takes up less space. Whereas the other colors, they probably don't sell as often because it's like it's so many colors where, you know, white and black, they're going to sell, like they're going to go like that. It's going to be hard to keep on the shelves. So they're going to put that on a smaller spool to keep more. The other ones are on a larger spool to where it takes up less space and just makes it look like it's full, even if it's only like a few of them there because it's taking up more real estate. That's the first thing. And, you know, why not just make them all the same size? You have to think about, you know, that's one of the reasons like they would make that decision is just for space and to be able to keep more of these on the shelves. Also, these are sizes that are, I mean, colors that are in demand. People are going to want this no matter what. So they're charging you more for the colors that are in demand 
versus the ones that's going to sit on their shelves, just like when, you know, with anything, um, housing, when they say, you know, it's a buyer's market, it's because there are too many houses, um, not enough technically demand for it, and they are priced lower because, hey, we need to get rid of this inventory, this housing inventory by any means necessary. Whereas when it's a um, a seller's market, there's not a lot of inventory or they're high in demand. And it's like, it's kind of weird because they'll say it's a buyer's market, right? But to me, it's like, they're the same, right? Because if it's, when they say it's a seller's market, that means people are buying houses. There's not enough like inventory for houses and people are like literally buying houses. Like it's up. So they're going to charge more. So I just think like as far as like profit margin wise, like, you know, when it's a, it's a high demand, it's a um, low demand, a lot of inventory, you're just trying to off the house, like, get rid of it. They're not moving. Hey, let's drop the price a little bit um, so that we can at least just not carry this mortgage and carry this, whatever. But when they're moving and grooving and them houses are selling like hotcakes and they know like they can create a bidding war, the prices go up. Same thing with this. So when I was on my TikTok, I was saying that not everything should be priced the same. I don't care if it's a vinyl shirt. Not all vinyl is created equal. If you have a design that is easy to weed, you know, you don't have a lot of cavities, you literally can pull it up and darn near pull out everything because you don't have a bunch of cavities that you have to go in there and pick out. That's You're going to be able to get through that faster than if you had something that's very, very detailed. So if it's detailed, you have to account for the time that's going to take for you to go and weed all of those details. So I recommend that people have a starting. So if someone asks you, it may not be the exact cost because you have to figure out how much work is it, is it going to take. What we do is not cookie cutter. It's not a, this is the same way every single time. Like if you have a brand versus customized. When you have a brand, everything is the same. You know exactly what it's going to take to cut it, weed it. It's like literally the same thing every single time. But when you're doing custom and personalized items, it's going to change. It's going to fluctuate. So you need to have a starting point. Whatever is the easiest way that you can do it, the cheap, the most um, like least expensive, this is where it starts at. And that lets them, that kind of eliminates a lot of people as well, because if your starting point is outside of their budget, there's no sense in them wasting your time because, hey, my starting budget is outside, my starting price is outside of the budget that, you know, you was looking to spend uh, $10 a shirt. And I'm telling you that my starting price is $20. Don't come to me asking me about no $10 shirt because maybe I don't have a $10 shirt for you. Are you going to let me over? Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, if it's certain things where it's like certain colors, right? They're, they are in higher demand, like your white shirts or everyone that keeps saying, well, my customers don't like white. They want black shirts. They want this. Charge more for those shirts that are in demand because you're going to have to order so much more of them. It's going to be harder for you to keep those in stock. Big businesses teach us about how to efficiently and effectively run our smaller businesses all the time. We just have to open up our mindsets, open up our minds, open up our eyes, and really look at things from a business standpoint when we are conducting business with these companies um, and when you're going into stores, paying attention to things like that because it can help you. Although they are selling things retail or like ready to ship, ready, well, ready to buy items and you're not, how they conduct business and the strategic ways that they do things can actually help you in your business. And understanding things like that is what's going to help your bottom line, because then you're going to know how to properly price. So many of you guys struggle with pricing for your business. And it's because as crafters, we go and we look at things like these craft calculators. And don't get me wrong, they are a starting point. 
But I guarantee right now, if I ask for y'all to put a three for those who are frustrated with themselves about their price point, you are frustrated with how to price. Um, most of you would probably put a three. Um, I just looked at, I look online, all the three inch colors are $5.99. One, it can't be, any, I mean, it's li it was literally put onto the spool at that price. So it might be area. So you said never seen that at my location. So it might be area. Um, and how, so here's the thing, right? So sometimes things will go on sale at like a Walmart. Let's say winter, winter clothes, right? Or like long sleeves or really thick things. We might get a few of them here because it might get a little bit cold here, right? But if they don't sell, that type of stuff goes on clearance way earlier here than they do in other places. So then people will get online and say, oh, well, this is on clearance at my Walmart. Take them, you know, show them this SKU. And people will go into these stores and say, well, my friend got it, but it's a different area. It may not be in demand here in South Florida to have this trench coat or this big old coat, this bubble coat, but we're somewhere where it's still cold right now. It's still in demand. You need this to not freeze your butt off. So no, these are not clearance for us and vice versa. Swimsuits might be on clearance somewhere else, but you come to Florida, you still going to pay top dollar for a swimsuit because the majority of the time it's hot here. So if there are more creators and there are more people buying it in a specific area, they're going to charge differently because they know their demographic. The target audience or the target demographic, um, I'm not even going to say the target, but the actual buying demographic for a Hobby Lobby in Pembroke Pines can be totally different from the Hobby Lobby that's in Hialeah. It's going to be different from a Hobby Lobby that is in Sacramento or Michigan or Texas. Every place is different based off of who's coming into the store. So there might be more crafters or more creators that use a lot of ribbon and use those specific colors. And they're looking at the numbers. They're taking the time to analyze the fact that, man, we can't keep this white and black on the shelves. That means it's in demand. So let's make it a different way. Let's give it a different price point. You cannot go into business thinking that it's all going to be the same every single day year, month, week, hell, from day to day. Look at how the price of eggs change day to day. And I'm going to tell you, I honestly think people's reaction to this whole eggs thing has fueled why the prices keep going up. I'm like, what the heck is so different? Is it that there is a reduction in chicken? Because like it has to, you, you have to me, they have to justify it some way. Was there a reduction in the number of chickens that were available to lay eggs? Was there this whole thing? Like, did the cold make it to where because they were outside? Did all did the chicken population die who produces eggs? Like, I'm so confused on this this humongous hike in. Mm -hmm in chickens like in well in eggs and how much they have how much the, the the cost is just like i mean it's just fluctuating out the yin yang and to be honest i think as consumers we consider it to be funny to have all the memes and oh well you know oh i'm an egg dealer and this that and the third where those, you know, those, the powers that be when it comes to that are looking at the fact that like, oh, y'all really out here panicking about some eggs and they just going to keep the, they going to keep the, let's keep the party rolling. Um, I, I so it, was, it was crazy because I saw one article that says inflation is decreasing, yet these eggs keep, the same eggs that I had just purchased for I want to say that carton of 60, I paid $21.
someone posted a picture of that same thing costing $60. You want your rabbit mind if you think I'm about to pay a dollar per egg. Baby, that would be the day I would have become vegan. When with Hell, like vegans, they don't eat eggs, baby. I wouldn't have had an egg and not a, not a, ooh. But people kept saying, oh, well, I love eggs. I have to have this or whatever, you know. So that price just keeps going up. And the more we as consumers talk about it, whether it's lighthearted in a lighthearted way, the more we complain about it, it's like people are still buying eggs as much as they complain about it. And they're seeing all of this, this interaction and all of this engagement about eggs and all of this content being created about these eggs to where they're going to ride that gravy train right now for them eggs is a gravy train because people are saying like they're, they're still buying it. I, I don't know. I mean, unless you are someone that's like a baker and, and your business is in making cakes, I'm trying to figure out what we needed so many eggs for. Baby, look, I'm not buying no eggs. I'm going on the egg strike. Y'all will be all right. Y'all don't need no omelets. Y'all don't need no pancakes. Y'all don't need no waffles. What does we make eggs with? Baby, y'all don't need no macaroni and cheese. Y'all don't need no pies. Y'all would be getting my head, my house would be egg free. I haven't seen as crazy of prices as like some areas. I'm like, I just paid twenty one dollars for this, baby. Where you at? Where you paying sixty? I can buy you some eggs and ship them to your UPS, and you still ain't like paying sixty dollars. Where you at? I was like six. I'm not paying a dollar. An egg. Not going to happen, Captain. Exactly. It's the same. It's the exact same thing with cell phones. It's the exact same thing with cell phones. Oh, gee, I just came from the store. The eggs were 20 for $15. I was like, no. Um, I was able to score some eggs um, at Costco's $6 for $24. Um, gotcha. Just uh, with Hobby Lobby, I typically see uh, the same price unless it was a paper sticker versus uh, packaging. I know it's done, just never on the actual package. They typically use the same warehouse to ship out. Now, two inches, three hundred nine. That's why I think it was an error. Um, that they so you're trying that they spooled so many of them on. I mean, on there, on this part where it said. Like this was five ninety nine, so the bigger one meaning it's like three. Because yeah, this part is the sticker that's on there. Hey, this one doesn't have a barcode. I wonder how she scanned this in. Hmm. I just realized this don't have a barcode. What for? What for? How for? How they scan this in? That's very interesting. Huh. They had to type this in because there's no barcode on this. Very, very interesting. I don't know why the, you know, why it was that way, but at that particular one, it was $3.99 and $5.99. Hmm. Never realized there was no barcode. All of them. So literally all everything that was not black or white, if it was a three inch ribbon, it was five ninety nine. It was well, it was three ninety nine. Only the black and white were five ninety nine. But every other they had, they didn't have the orange I needed, but I checked it. They the blue one was that way. The red one, the yellow one. Um, it, I didn't. I think I only grabbed the red and the yellow. I think to compare it to the black and the white. But there had a blue one that was that way. They had um, uh, a pink one that was like that. I was like, dang it! I wish it was October because they showed up where they got this pink ribbon. Um, and then there was like a lighter purple one. They were all 
on the three inch, like they were the three inches, they were on the bigger core and they said three ninety nine. Um, oh, I don't go in the Hobby Lobby. I didn't realize they don't scan. I don't go in there that much. I actually, I think um, most for most things to me, Hobby Lobby is overpriced. So I really don't go in there. I only went in there because I refused to pay nine forty nine at Joanne's. Well, I didn't get mine for three ninety nine because the one that I needed was the white ones, and I paid five ninety nine. Yeah, I paid five ninety nine for mine. Um, for the white ones, the color ones were were three ninety nine. So I didn't. If I, I wish I could have, but I had to pay five ninety nine for these. Ah, okay. But, and it's things like that too, right? So if you're, if you are in business and you rely a lot on retail, you know, and, you know, you have to keep up with these things and really looking at when things increase, even if you don't need, like, if you don't need inventory right now, right? Let's say you are stocked up on your ribbon, your tool, your shirts, whatever it is. If you've seen an influx in price changes for other things, check with your vendors to see if their price has increased. Because what you don't want is you go and say, okay, you have a few things and you're basing it off of the last price that you charged. And then you go to buy more tool or you go to buy shirts or you go to buy X, Y, and Z. And now the price has increased, but you've already given your customer a price. I encourage you guys. That's also the kind of one of the benefits of having like a list and maybe having only like three to four places, two to three places that you get things from regularly. So it makes it easier to go and check their sites, but check their sites so that you can adjust accordingly. You have to know all the numbers of business. You guys keep saying you want to be business owners, but it's like, if it's not you actively creating something, if it's not you following a trend, you don't really care about it. Business is so much more than you just making a shirt, making a tutu, making candles, making soaps, making, hell, even hair products. You have to know the numbers. Maybe this month you do candles, you got your vessels for a certain price. These now go up. Guess what? The price of your product now needs to reflect that unless you are okay with losing whatever that price increase was. All right, I gotta I have to get in here so I can start these. I said I'm gonna talk to y'all until I got to the house, whether my thoughts were finished or not. But just think about the numbers, guys. Um, if you say that you're in business, I just encourage you guys to put as much focus on understanding all of the numbers of your business. It's pro your profits are by the numbers. Numbers from conversions to supplies to overhead. All of these things are so, so important if you are trying to run a business. If you still just want to make some, some pocket change and it's like some mad money, it's a, it's a hustle, a side hustle for you, a side gig. It's your part-time Continue to operate that way. But if you are truly trying to create something where you want it to be sustainable, you want it to be your brand and butter, you want to create a business where you can hire staff, where you're not in and training people and you have a business, you have a company where you have other employees and you're not just self-employed. If that is your desire and you have this in your mind that you want to build to that you have to start looking at the numbers now and getting into good good business practices with looking at your numbers and how they can change and how you have to make those adjustments, all right? So hopefully this helps you guys. Until next time.
have a great one. Don't forget that we do have a uh, overstock, you know, with in keeping in line with numbers. Um, I noticed when we did ours, like, you know, a lot of people were getting the smaller format printers. Um, tumblers are like trending like crazy right now to where people tend to like just get eight and a half by 11. So when we ordered, we ordered way too much, like for how people are buying way too much, eight and a half by 14 and 11 by 17, like our eight and a half by 11, um, is depleting a lot faster. And even the 13 by 19, cause people want to do the oversized shirts. Like when, when th people think I want to do all overs, they, of course you want to use larger size papers to be able to, um, use less sheets. So eight and a half by 11, 11 uh, 13 by 19 flying off the shelves, but eight and a half by 14 of my 17 is not. And that was, you know, partly on us. I assume that, and it's crazy because most people don't realize you can print eight and a half by, by me being in groups. I realize there are so many people that don't realize that those printers, like the small format printers, you can print eight and a half by 14. You really can print 47 inches long, but it's like, they're not seeing that. A lot of people who have a lot of issues with 13 by 19 in their 15,000, a simple switch to 11 by 17, where it's not a wider paper and it's not having as much trouble gripping it, you'll find that it might be only the 11 by the 13 by 19. So if you can use more 11 by 17, um, especially if you're not doing like super, super, super large designs, it's better for you. But in... Not full, like we analyzed the market, but not fully, we ended up. So our miscalculation is your gain because we currently have an overstock sale going on on eight and a half by 14 and 11 by 17 fast dry only. Um, and then our formula B, because we just want to get that off the shelf so we can get um, a different product in. Uh, so there's an overstock sale going on right now over on shop.hsinc365.com. So if you use eight and a half by 14 often, head over to our site. Uh, it is 25% off um, while supplies last of our overstock. So we've allotted a certain amount as overstock. Once that is gone, it's gone. The price will go back to the regular price. Um, so once the inventory is depleted or January 31st, whichever comes first, um, is how long that will last. So if you use eight and a half by 14, head over to our site if you want to stock up on eight and a half by 14 or 11 by 17 fast dry 100 sheet packs um, and the Formula B. So if you have an eco tank printer, Formula B ink is, it, you know, it's gonna work great for your eco tanks and you guys can stock up on that now. All right, y'all, until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.